If you are ready to hit the road again, or the skies, or the rails, or the waters, there's some help in a new book titled 100 Cities, 5,000 Ideas. Welcome back to Textination. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us is author Joe Yogerst. Hi, Joe. Hey, Fred. How are you doing? Terrific. Well, this is another wonderful book from National Geographic, and it covers so much ground. Uh, let's share a little bit about your background here and how this was compiled. Well, I have been a writer since I was 14 in high school. Um, and I always had an interest in traveling and writing and eventually was able to make a career out of doing it. And uh, took me 16 years of knocking on the door at National Geographic, but I finally got my first assignment in uh 1999, they called out of the blue and asked me if I wanted to write a book on driving the Pan American Highway from Texas to Argentina, and it was kind of hard to say no. And uh, since then, I've worked on somewhere between 40 and 50 book projects for them, initially as a part of a team of usually four or five, six writers. And then they came along in 2017 and said, we're going to do a book called 50 States, 5,000 Ideas, what would you like to write in it? And I said, I'd like to write the whole thing. And uh, they were kind enough to let me do that. And 100 Cities is the fifth book in that series. And I have written every word of every one of those books. <laughs> wow, that's just amazing. Now, tell us about some of the lessons in the book, uh, the advice you're giving people here. What did you try to focus on? Well, the, the books uh, and this book in particular are really kind of double double things. Half, they're basically half, you know, armchair dream books of looking at the pictures and reading the descriptions and trying to decide, you know, maybe places that you'll never go and, you know, dreaming about these places. And the other half is planning because of the 5,000 ideas. Where do I want to go on my next vacation? What do I want to do when I get there? Uh, once you decide to go to these places, I would always recommend that you buy a much more detailed guidebook because this is this is the broad brush strokes rather than the nitty gritty. Um, so it's part dream book and part planning book about where you want to go next. And do some of the things in here come from trial and error on your part or how do you pick and choose? Oh, yeah, very much so. Um, you know, a lot of these cities are personal to me because I visited them as a backpacker a long time ago during my college days or just after. And then I got to go back for them, back to them for National Geographic. And it was interesting to see the difference over the, the decades or the years. And also the fact that I no longer had to travel on $10 a day anymore and stay in youth hostels or camp out in the municipal campground. And I could stay in a proper hotel and eat in great restaurants. Um, so a lot of them were very personal to me, um, how how they changed over the years during my visits. Um, or there are places that I've lived in over time, um, London, Singapore, Hong Kong, Johannesburg, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Las Vegas. I've, I've lived in all of those cities at one time or another. And I could write to them from a very personal note as a resident and then a later visitor because I don't live in any of them anymore. Um, I'm a visitor when I go back there. Um, so that's kind of how it got compiled. Um, I would say 35 or 40 of the cities were really kind of the obvious ones, you know, New York, London, Tokyo, Sydney, things like that. And then it was a matter of going through probably a, a short list of 200 other cities and deciding which ones we were going to include and which ones were going to get left out. I think we could have easily done 200 cities, 10,000 ideas because there are so many cool places around the planet maybe even 300, um, but we had to narrow it down. I had to narrow it down and we had some very loose cri criteria. Um, since the book primarily sells to Americans and Canadians, it was what cities are they most likely to visit? Um, what cities were more tourist friendly rather than just a big business city um, and um, or an industrial city? Um, what was their history like? What was their food culture like? What kind of global landmarks did they have and we had to spread them out across all the continents. So, uh, you know, there are more in Europe than any place else, and then Asia after that, but we also needed cities in Africa and Latin America. Um, so we had to call through a lot of cities in those continents and decide 
what we were going to have. And some of these places I had to go visit again and decide, are they really worth being in the book? Um, Nairobi is a good example of that, the capital of Kenya. The first time I went there, which again was my backpacking days, it wasn't really that interesting of a city or that big of a city. It was a place that you kind of pass through on your way to the national parks and the safari experience. When I went back, I've been back twice recently, and it's now Nairobi is actually a, a destination in its own right, with very interesting um, restaurants, very nice places to stay, um, great shopping, um, and a national park that's now, the city has expanded so much, it's, it's grown to the edge of a national park. Um, so there's a national park where you can see lions and, and elephants and giraffes. It's really almost right in the city. Wow, just uh, just amazing. It sounds to me and to probably a lot of people like you've got a, a terrific job. Doesn't get much better. Uh, no, um, but it did take a long time to get to this point. 16 years of knocking on the door at National Geographic before I got that first assignment. So what are we seeing now when it comes to travel and what are some of the differences maybe when it comes to planning a trip as we've hopefully come out of a pandemic? Well, it was getting this way before the pandemic, but there's so many people traveling these days that, that summer is a time to try to avoid. Unless you're going to a place where really the summer is weather-wise is the only time to go or, or the early fall, then I would recommend skipping summer. You know, I, going to Scandinavia, really you should go in the summer because you're probably not gonna great, or, or at least September, or early October, and I would say the same for Alaska or Northern Canada, um, you know, cities there, I, I would really recommend strongly that you have to go in the summer because otherwise you're not gonna get great weather unless you really are going there for the snow sports. Um, otherwise, or if you're going to a tropical island location or tropical city, you can go at any time of year. It doesn't really matter. If you're going to Singapore, it's 90 degrees and 90 degrees humidity every day Pretty much, I know because I lived there for five years that the weather is always going to be the same. Um, but it, but for temperate cities or temperate national parks or whatever it is, really try to avoid the summer because they're going to be really super crowded and maybe uncomfortable. And it's going to be hard to get reservations uh, for lodging there or a campsite there um, or a restaurant or whatever it is. Um, the shoulder seasons are best. And like I said, this started back before COVID uh, and is even, is even truer now. What I've discovered this year is that April and October, maybe even late March or early October, or early November, I would really recommend going at those times, um, whether you're visiting cities or parks or whatever it is, um, to, to try to get a reservation and to go places where that, that are not overcrowded. Um, so the early, and late shoulder seasons these days, or if it's the Southern hemisphere, it's the opposite, you know, um, for the fall down there, uh, which is our spring and vice versa. Um, that's my recommendation. And, and yeah, you have to make reservations and plan ahead. Well, this book talks about cities, but you've yes. also written a new children's book, uh, National Parks, Where the Wild Things Are. So Yes, that's right. So you love the outdoors and, and nature too, not just the uh, the city. No, um, people often ask me, what are my favorite travel experiences? And I will say there's two things that I really like more than anything else. One is being dropped into a city I've never been to before and kind of wandering aimlessly and exploring that city on my own with a map in hand and seeing what I find. The other thing is being outdoors alone or relatively alone in nature. Um, which is still possible in a lot of national parks and wildlife areas if you get off get off the beaten track, even in places like Yellowstone and Yosemite. I can go to Yosemite today and you can be in Yosemite Valley with thousands of people or you can get to the back country and be by yourself in the Sierra, the high Sierra. Um, so those are my, there are two extremes. And on one case, I'm alone in the wilderness without any other people. And the other case, I can be with 10 million people in a new city and I'm perfectly happy with both of those experiences. Terrific. Well, as you've said, you've lived all over the place. You've visited all over the place. So let me ask you, do you put down roots somewhere or where do you call home? 
Well, I grew up in Pacific Beach, which is on the north side of San Diego. And I was I left when I was 18 and didn't come back until I was 38. And I would visit here because my 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 parents were still here. But I when I started having my own kids, I thought San Diego was a pretty cool place to grow up. And I thought, you know, I want to raise my own kids there. And so I live in one of those little beach towns between San Diego and L.A. And uh, it's close enough to two big airports that I can get out and get around the world. Um, although I still like to drive myself and there's nothing better than a road trip. Um, so my roots are here. It's kind of a funny place to have roots because it's a newer place. And I don't know a lot of people that were actually born and raised here um, among my friends. Um, but that this is my hometown and I'm back back there. And it's the, the hometown for at least one of my kids. The other one was born in Singapore when I was living there. Wow, just uh, just amazing and uh, great place for the climate too, right? Where, where you're at. Yes. Well, yes, I look outside, it's blue sky, it's going to be 70 degrees today. So and it's and it's November. And that's <laughs> so. and that's the 10 day forecast, too, I'm sure. So <laughs> yes, pretty much. Yes, yes, it is the 10 day forecast. <laughs> so the book again is titled 100 Cities, 5000 Ideas. Joe Yogers, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, thanks for having me that way. It was my pleasure. <laughs>